Hey guys, today I'm going to teach you about the Kingdom of Babylon concealing death's residence in the Temple of God. Jeffrey Leon, welcome to this edition of Satan's Strategic Command, dedicated to the advancement of Christian theology, explicating the mark of the beast. May God bless the reading of his holy word. Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked to me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great harlot that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stone and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication, and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints, and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. So guys, we know that Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, is the final seat of all lost souls in the kingdom of hell arrayed in a graduating scale in accordance to their work, their works. Romans chapter 2, verse 5 and 6, Paul states this, But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render it to every man according to his deeds. This appears to me to be guys a, a a a direct reference by Paul to satanic captivity of all flesh as it, with the mark of the beast as it appears in Revelation chapter 17 verse 1 through 6 it is as souls are evaluated by their works and they are manifestly declared to be judged by God to have the mark of the beast and no longer capable to cultivate the fruits of righteousness and magnify the glory of God in their lives. This is an amazing passage of scripture, Romans 2, 5, and 6. But after thy hardness and impenitent, impenitent heart, treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to to his deeds. This appears to me Paul is referencing the incorporation of all flesh in the final seat in the kingdom of hell as they take their final seats with the mark of the beast arrayed in a graduating scale in accordance to their works and their proximity to the appearing of Antichrist. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3 and 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19. Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? So, these people are, are seated in Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6. All souls that receive the mark of the beast, this is their kingdom. This is the kingdom of Babylon and the kingdom of darkness where they are spiritually, um, they have taken their final seats as they have been evaluated by Holy Father God prior to the second advent of Jesus Christ. John chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, In him was light, and that light was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Or the darkness has never overpowered it, English Standard Version. So we know darkness has no power to evaluate what is in the light. Only light can evaluate what is in the darkness. Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17, we know is the seal of Satan that resides in predestination today within the heart of the image of the beast. So this is the corporeal pairing of the image to the beast. We have this here in Revelation 13, 15 through 17. It's ministry pouring out... It, describes its ministry, pouring out the spirit of Antichrist, Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 and 10, soliciting the worship of death, Romans 3, 13, to supplant the glory of, of to supplant the glory of Holy Father God by way of the gospel of Jesus Christ, Romans 1, 16, for the glory of the beast within the constitution of man, Revelation chapter 22, verse 12, James 2, 10, Exodus chapter 20, 
verse 1 through 17, reflected in civil and ecclesiastical powers, causing all flesh to receive the mark of the beast. Romans chapter 8, verse 5 and 9, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 10 through 12, and Jude chapter 11, excuse me, Jude chapter 2, verse 11 through 13. So we know that the, the beast is primarily a, a civil power as it has in the seal of Satan, it's depicted as the image of the beast has the power to kill people that will not worship it in the place of Jesus Christ. And it causes the mark of the beast to fall upon all flesh. This is as absolutely crystal clear in the seal of Satan that appears in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17. We've been discussing in numerous previous lessons. We have identified the image of the beast as a civil power that promotes and promulgates ecclesiastical fraud to legislative and executive powers in government appearing as the names of blasphemy within the beast, Revelation chapter 17, verse 3, declaring its administration of ecclesiastical fraud and its spiritual proximity to the appearing of the beast, Revelation chapter 13, verse 18. Now, the seal of Satan, the appearing, the corporal appearing of the image of the beast appears, Revelation chapter 13, 15. It causes all flesh after it appears and it, it supplants the glory of Jesus Christ for that of itself and it forces all flesh to worship it and render, ho render homage and obedience to it on pain of death. And, and that appears in Revelation 13, 15 and he causeth all both, excuse me, Uh, Revelation thirteen fifteen, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many would not worship. The image of the beast should be killed. So we know the image to the beast is the corporeal body of death that enforces satanic occupation within our world. And then very two next verses, verses 16 and 17, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, receive a mark on the right hand of their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of its name. So, the image of the beast forces all flesh to worship it on pain of death, and uh, uh, supplanting the glory of Jesus Christ for that of itself within civil and ecclesiastical powers, and then it causes, in doing so, it causes the mark of the beast to fall on upon all flesh, which I personally believe um, um, Revelation 13, 15 is black out of free speech on this group of individuals that reside in the United, under the Constitution of the United States today. And I believe that there's probably a million of them with the seal of Satan and predestination. And uh, 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 that this is what is is communicated in Revelation 13, 15 and verse 16 and 17. Once this civil power starts executing people to uh, satiate its own illicit desires, it uh, it causes, this causes the mark of the beast to fall upon all flesh, which appears in Revelation chapter 13, verse 16 and 17. And then immediately we have the appearing of Antichrist in our world. Revelation chapter 13, verse 18. Here is wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and six. And we also briefly touched on the other day that that public executions without any pretense of righteous judgment or justice are the fulfillment of the ministry of the image to the beast. This is how the image of the beast fulfills its ministry as a child of Satan and how it it causes when when this occurs this this these public executions is what causes finality and finality the mark of the beast to fall upon all flesh that cannot retain the glory of God and cannot resist this power as it is manifestly executing people without any pretense of uh, righteous judgment or justice in democracy and democratic liberties and that people that once resided under constitutional protections. This appears in Isaiah chapter 59 verse 9 and 10. There is judgment far from us, neither does justice overtake us. We wait for light, but behold obscurity. For darkness, but we walk. We wait for light, but behold obscurity. For brightness, but we walk in darkness. Excuse me. So, 
Isaiah chapter 59, verse 9 and 10, we see these people declaring the ministry of the image to the beast. As the image to the beast, the seal of Satan became fully operational as it appears in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17. It caused the mark of the beast to fall upon all flesh as it was put, it was executing people in, in democratic society without any pretense of righteous judgment or justice. And this caused the mark of the beast to fall upon all flesh that cannot retain the glory of God in their lives and then we have the appearing of Antichrist in our world Revelation chapter 13 15 Revelation chapter 13 16 and 17 and then the appearing of Antichrist Revelation chapter 13 verse 18 so we have identified the harlot as the origin of all false apostate Christianity the administration of ecclesiastical fraud attempting to vertically detach the creature from his creator by way of the ministry of Jesus Christ in the heavenly sanctuary disseminating mercy and grace to all flesh Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 and 16 Matthew chapter 5 verse 43 through 45 Revelation chapter 19 verse 7 and 8 and Matthew chapter 25 verse 1 through 13 where we see we see Christianity, we see the, the ten virgins where five are wise and five are foolish that represent the churches in the last day. And the five that are foolish, the glory of God departs from them, their lamps go out, and they are yet in their sins. They're depicted as harlots, and they're not fit to meet the husband at the wedding. They're considered harlots, they're yet in their sins, and they the glory of God departs from them, and they receive the mark of the beast, and they die spiritually. And they are dead souls residing in suspended animation, just as everyone that's that receives the mark of the beast in in uh, 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 in the public the general public receives it as is declared with dead souls uh, residing in suspended animation um, awaiting for final judgment which is the presence of Jesus Christ the second advent of Jesus Christ so um, uh, the seal of Satan is in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17. The final seat of all lost souls in the kingdom of hell arrayed in a graduating scale in accordance to their works and their, oh, excuse me, and their proximity to the appearing of Antichrist oh, excuse me, is depicted in Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6. So we have been discussing the golden cup in the, carlet, in the harlot's hand that scripture positively identifies as the kingdom of Babylon. Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 6 and 7. Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken over wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. <laughs> So we absolutely have the the identity of of of, of the, the the definition of what the golden cup is in the harlot's hand. It is the the that represents the kingdom of Babylon. And as I've been discussing uh, in previous lessons, that Satan cannot crown himself in the kingdoms of men until he has first seated himself as king in the hearts of all flesh. So the, the golden cup represents the kingdom of Babylon. And it is also, it represents the, the kingdom of darkness that where men reside that who, uh, uh, do not wish to magnify the glory of God within their lives. We have identified the image of the beast appearing as the names of blasphemy within the beast. This is the, manif the manifestation of their ministry, which is founded upon bas blasphemy, which I wrote is, is uh, complete disregard and respect for, if I can find my notes here. Oh, I lost my, I can't find my notes. I can't find, I had some notes here. And I can't find it off. Anyway, blasphemy is the, the complete disregard for spiritual things and religious persons or sacred things. And this is revealed in Revelation chapter 17, verse 3, 
where the image of the beast appears as the names of blasphemy. And I believe that this is the this identifies the 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 direction for the, the ministry of the image to the beast as it goes out and it promotes and promulgates ecclesiastical fraud deliberately to to civil to civil powers um, that as it's laboring for civil control over the population to enforce the worship of death as it resides within its own heart. So we have identified the image of the beast appearing as the names of blasphemy within the beast. 1 John 3, 4, Romans chapter 3, verse 20 and 23, Romans 6, 23, 1 Timothy 6, 15 and 16, John chapter 10, verse 22 through 33, and Luke chapter 5, verse 17 through 26. And that the image of the beast primarily is drinking in of the spirit of Antichrist in the golden cup as the desire to fornicate with the world. 1 John 2, 15 through 18, 1 Timothy 6, 10, 1 John 2, 15 through 18, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, for all those in the world, the lust of flesh, the lust of eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Little children, this is the last time. As ye have heard, the Antichrist shall come. Even now there are many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. So we have 1 John 2, 15 through 18 gives us the deepest roots of the spirit of Antichrist as it, as it, uh, 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 digs deep into the soul, the souls of men, um, and men abide in deceit. Jeremiah 9, 6, thine habitation is in, in the midst of deceit. Through deceit they refuse to know me, and they labor to just satiate and fulfill their own satanic desires. And we have identified the harlot as primarily drinking into the spirit of Antichrist in the golden cup as a desire to perpetuate abomination or idolatry. Matthew chapter 24, 15, when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand of the holy place, who so readeth, let him understand. Daniel chapter 3, verse 1 through 30, and Galatians chapter 4, verse 27, where we have, it's declared by Paul, more are the children of the desolate than she which hath an husband, which is a reference to the death. The abomination of desolation is, I believe, the appearing of the beast, and those that are desolate are those that have the mark of the beast. We have, and so Paul declares this, more are the children of the desolate, more, what is Paul saying is more are, they're going to be in majoritarian in nature as, as far as the numbers of the population, more people will have the mark of the beast than those that have the seal of God and are prepared to meet the husband at the second advent. So we have also established the administration of the image of the beast enforcing the seal of Satan that this is this is what this is Revelation 13 15 through 17 is the seal of Satan as it resides within the constitution of man and these we what we're seeing today as the image of the beast pours out the spirit of Antichrist Revelation 14 9 and 10 it solicits the worship of death Romans 3 13 their throat is an open sepulcher with their tongues they have used deceit the poison of ass is under their lips and uh, this soliciting the worship of death is it is depicted the full transference of the spirit of Antichrist is depicted in Romans 3 13 their throat was an open sepulcher it's an invitation to serve hell and death it's an open grave for people that fellowship with the image of the beast with their tongues they have used deceit the habitation of of of, of man's uh, uh, man's own 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 darkened state that where he's not cognizant that death is inhabiting and in his soul with their tongues have you seen the poison of asses on her lips finally um, the, uh, the communications are received from the image of the beast to the creature the creature receives it as truth and abides within this lie and begins laboring uh, or or just passively. This, but we know directly as it pour, the image of the beast pours out the spirit of Antichrist. Um, Romans 3.13, it's, it's, it's convincing people to abide in a lie. That lie is received and people be, begin serving the image to the beast and its illicit works and its desire to fulfill say, satanic capacity with the spirit of Antichrist within its own blood. So Galatians 4.27 is, is an amazing passage of Scripture. More are the children of the desolate. Paul declares more are the children that will have the mark of the beast than those which will have the seal of God and are manifestly declared to meet the husband at the second advent of Jesus Christ. We have also established the administration of the image of the beast enforcing the seal of Satan. Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17 is one mind, one voice, and one singular vision with the, with the beast. This is when you're speaking to the image of the beast, you're speaking to the beast. He, the, the image of the beast is the beast in partial measure as it labors to captivate all flesh on pain of death to serve death within its environment as it the, the seal of death 
resides within its own soul, within its own constitution. So Revelation 17, 17, for God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, the beast's will, and to agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God should be fulfilled. The kingdom of Babylon representing the will of the king, 2 Timothy 2, 24 through 26, where we see people are taken and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. We know that in ancient times, in 500 BC, the kingdom of Babylon, everybody, all flesh in the kingdom of Babylon, was ultimately in subjection unto the will of one man, and that was the king. And that's why we have the the declaration of the final seat of all lost souls um, in the kingdom of hell with the mark of the beast depicted as the spirit, the, the kingdom of Babylon in Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, verse 5. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And this abode of this... This abode, this this depiction of the kingdom of Babylon is symbolic that everyone of the fact that everyone that receives the mark of the beast spiritually will be subject unto the will of the king, which is the appearing of Antichrist within our world. Revelation or the beast, Revelation chapter 13, verse 18. After the seal of Satan is made perfect and the fullness of its numbers and operational capacity that appears in Revelation chapter 13 verse 15 through 17. And 2 Timothy 2:24 2, through 26 is an amazing passage of scripture that appears to me to to directly uh, uh, point to the captivity and be referencing the captivity, the final captivity of all lost souls with the mark of the beast in Revelation chapter 17 verse 1 through 6. It says, And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach patient and meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves with God peradventure, will give them repentance unto the acknowledging of the truth. Remember, everybody that receives the mark of the beast is it declared to be inhabited by deceit, their own deceit and their own lies that abide within themselves conceal the presence of death and the seal of Satan within their own hearts, and they're not cognizant of it because they're in the kingdom of darkness. And that's the inner workings of the kingdom of darkness is to captivate people so they're not cognizant of death's resonance within their souls and their immediate environment that, that they are arrayed by the demons of hell in their immediate environment. So in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves if God peradventure will give them repentance unto the to the acknowledging of the truth and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of, a, uh, snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. And that captive, that word captive there is referring to um, prisoners that are taken alive as prisoners of war. So this appears to me to be the reference, a very reference to to people that are spiritually dead, but residing in suspended animation with the mark of the beast and that and that appear in their final seats in the kingdom of hell and arrayed and is manifested by their works and their in this their works posit them in proximity to the to the appearing of Antichrist. So these are dead souls in Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6. These are dead souls residing in suspended animation with the mark of the beast for the appearing of the beast. That appears in Revelation chapter 13, verse 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is a number of a man. And his number is 603 scored sticks. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15, we have the administration, I believe, is the administration of the the, the image of the beast. And it's clearly... Uh, 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 enumerates for us that Satan's ministry through the image of the beast is that of, of ecclesiastical fraud and to exchange the truth of God for a lie and the worship of the creator for the worship of the creature. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers. For such are false, false apostles, deceitful, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ and no more for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light okay and so we know that 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 Satan we know an angel is a messenger and the light is the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 3 and 4 Okay, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid in the lost, and whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them who believe not, lest the light of glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto him. One, 1 John 1 5, God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. So we know that Satan's 
greatest tactical advantage as it appears here, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15, over all flesh is to appear as the glory of God and to convince people that he has the glory of God and exchange the exchange the truth of God for a lie and light for darkness so people will willfully exchange their souls to satanic power of their own volition until they are captive captivated on pain of death by the ministry of the image of the beast and then they no longer have any choice they are on pain of death they are forced to serve the image of the beast as the worship of death resides within the seal of Satan, resides within the constitution of man, and the image of the beast forces all flesh to receive the mark of the beast by the by the manifestation of its ministry and its seal that appears in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. We know the harlot is an ecclesiastical power, and we know the, the image of the beast, the names of blasphemy in Revelation chapter 17, verse 3 and 4, is a civil power. But we do know that the image of the beast has a ministry. It deliberately, the ministry is founded upon blasphemy, and it as it fornicates with the world, and it, it regenerates its blood with the spirit of Antichrist, it goes, it it takes, as a civil power, it takes, it, it promotes and promulgates ecclesiastical fraud to civil powers to obtain civil power. And this appears to me to be blacking out a free speech upon this group of people in the United States of America and incorporating the worship of death, which is, that's what that is. Revelation 13, 15 is the incorporation of the worship of death into the United States Constitution. And he had power to give life in the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. This is what appears, this appears to me to be the blacking out of free speech upon this, these civil powers. And I believe it's local city state and giving them free reign to summarily execute American citizens without any pretense of righteous judgment or justice to satiate their satanic desires as they desired to be fulfilled with the spirit of Antichrist in their blood and the demons of hell manifestly arrayed within their presence. And verse 16 and 17, which is the, the constitution or the, the seal of Satan, uh, uh, depicts the mark of the beast falling, and he causeth all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in the right hand and their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark of the name of the beast or number of his name. This appears to me to be a religious tax. So the image of the beast, actually, it labors, it takes civil and ecclesiastical fraud to, it, it takes, excuse me, it takes, uh, ecclesiastical promotes and promulgates ecclesiastical fraud to civil powers and it takes organized crime in the form of religious tax which is 100 percent illegal today it's racketeering to to uh, uh, ecclesiastical powers to create this union of civil and ecclesiastical powers that appears as the beast and the harlot in revelation chapter 17 verse 1 through 6 and appears as the ministry the constitution as it resides within the image of the beast it appears as the ministry of the image of the beast that it, it it's the same thing it's a parallel revelation 13 15 through 17 is a parallel to revelation chapter 17 verse 3 and 4 they both depict a civil power in union with an ecclesiastical power to incorporate the worship of death into the United States Constitution, allowing the image of the beast to summarily execute American citizens that will not serve it. I personally believe it's sexual and monetary desires as the harlot is arrayed with gold, precious stone, and pearls. And that's, I believe that this reveals why the image of the beast sold its soul to Satan in the first place, was for sexual and monetary control over all flesh on pain of death, and to cap, cap, capture the glory of the world Within, as it labors to transform the 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 glory of Jesus Christ and the gospel of Jesus Christ for the glory of itself, and manifest the seal and constitution of Satan, Revelation thirteen fifteen through seventeen, incorporating the the seal of Satan, the worship of death of it as it as it supplants the glory of Jesus Christ and its its corporeal appearing into the United States Constitution. 
And that's manifestly absolutely what it's doing today. We know the image of the beast is pouring out the spirit of Antichrist, Revelation 14, 9 and 10, in the power of the beast, and it's soliciting the worship of death, Romans 3, 13, which gives us the full transfer, transfer of the spirit of Antichrist from the image of the beast to the creatures. What spiritually takes place as people... Um, willfully serve hell and death it's just it's depicted as their throat is an open sepulcher it's an open grave it's an invitation to death is what it is is what's it saying is when you fellowship with the image of the beast and under his ministry and it's and it's promoting uh ecclesiastical fraud or organized crime it is it's in it's inviting you into the pit of destruction with the mark of the beast. That's what Romans 3.13 is absolutely explicating. Their throat is an open sepulcher. It's an invitation to serve death unto the mark of the beast and final judgment by Holy Father God. With their tongues they have used deceit. This is the basis of everything they tell. They minister to everybody. It's all a lie until that they can get civil power to protect them so they can execute people that will not serve them sexually and monetarily, and ecclesiastical powers to stand up on the news every night and tell everybody that the, everything's fine and the image of the beast is not doing what is manifestly declared to be doing to God's children in Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 23 through 31. So 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15 gives us the ministry of the image to the beast. It, it declares the administration of satanic captivity as a ministry and as the as and we know revelation 13 15 through 17 by the seal of satan that the image of the beast is the administrator the mediator between all flesh and the spirit of antichrist that causes all flesh to receive the mark of the beast so we have been discussing lucifer's vertical detachment from the glory of god and his corrupting influence upon the souls of man, Isaiah 14, 12, Lucifer's motives for his attempted coup in heaven are usurping the throne of God, revealed in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 13 and 14. And finally, Lucifer's transformation into Satan inhabiting hell, 2 Peter 2, 4, as the resident of death, Hebrews 2, 14 and 15, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 15. Thus we know the kingdom of Babylon as an inhabited by all those who have the mark of the beast is the kingdom of darkness. Jude chapter 6 states it this way. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness, under the judgment of the of that great day. And this is also known as the pit. Uh, Revelation chapter 9, verse 7 through 11. Well, I personally believe this is God witnessing the ministry of the image of the beast. And as the image of the beast transforms into the child of Satan spiritually, and then we have the appearing of the king, the beast, in Revelation chapter 9, verse 11. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the t Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. So we we know that that all those that uh, excuse me thus we know the kingdom of babylon as inhabited by all those who have the mark of the beast is the kingdom of darkness jude chapter 6 and it's also known as the pit and revelation chapter 9 verse 7 through 11 and the king is declared to be residing over his kingdom and that's what that's what's being declared. It's the king residing over its kingdom as it has transformed all his children spiritually into sons and daughters of Satan. That's what's being declared in Revelation chapter nine, verse seven through eleven. But I personally believe it's first and foremost it's declaring the ministry of the image of the beast, and this is God witnessing the image to the beast transform into spiritually into a child of Satan and laboring for the appearing of uh of their king. So which is the angel of the bottomless pit and that the administration of the image of the beast Wait. Thus we know the kingdom of Babylon is inhabited by by all those who have the mark of the beast, and these are my notes, by the way. I wrote all this. I I I, I put this on Facebook. I'm having a lot of dizziness and a lot a lot of dizziness when I orate, but I don't have dizziness when I write these. When I write 
when I produce these 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 uh, uh, these theology lessons. I don't so it's all it's all written down anyway. So I can I can go over it again anytime I want to. So um, so we know that the kingdom of Babylon. We know that thus we know the kingdom of Babylon as inhabited by all those who have the mark of the beast is the kingdom of darkness, Jude 6, also known as the pit, Revelation chapter 9, verse 7 to 11, and that the administration of the image of the beast pouring out the spirit of Antichrist upon all flesh, soliciting the worship of death, is the mediator between all flesh and satanic captivity, attempting to lead all souls into a eternal condemnation. This is what's declared in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 14 through 19, where we have verse 18 and 19. The path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more under the perfect day. This is the manifestation of the glory of God. But the way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. And when we look at Matthew chapter 15, verse 13 and 14, every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted up, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. If the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the pit. We this appears to me to be what we have. We know on Proverbs 4, 14 through 19, we have the declaration of the ministry of the image of the beast. We have it's it's we have the warning by God. I think six times in the passage, God tells men to stay away from the image of the beast as it is promoting and promulgating ecclesiastical fraud and, and disseminating organized crime. And we have some of the torments and the pains of hell that come upon the image of the beast as it in measure, we don't know what measure yet, but it gains a measure of incorporating the, the, the worship of death, the seal of Satan, Revelation 13, 15 through 17, into the constitutions of the world. It, 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 it obtains this successfully in a certain measure, and we see as it transforms the constitutions of men into the constitutions of what is a facsimile of, of, of an organized crime family or a drug cartel, we see some of its labors, its torments spiritually in this passage, and its labors to captivate all flesh with the mark of the beast as it goes satanically insane. And it, because it literally, the image of the beast, you know, once the image of the beast incorporates the seal of Satan, Revelation 13, 15 through 17, into the constitution of man, the constitutions of, of, and the constitutions of democracies, it's effectively turned these constitutions into a drug cartel and, and or, or an organized crime family. And it will, it will actually, the Bible makes it absolutely crystal clear that it will act in accordance to that type of criminal insanity. It will be, it's an exact, but it's this criminal insanity is rebellion against Holy Father God, and the image of the beast is there to force all flesh that don't love God out of God's presence. It's there to, to captivate souls in satanic power to remove them from, by, by way of the mark of the beast, from the presence of Holy Father God. And so, and but it was done so because men allowed it to. Because men did not magnify the glory of God, the image of the beast came in and promoted and promulgated ecclesiastical fraud, and they wrote civil laws blocking free speech on this group of people, and these people turned, thus incorporating the seal of Satan into the constitutions, and this this creature turned the country into a facsimile of a drug cartel or or an organized crime family and it's acts the it, it's it's satanic psychopathic criminal psychopathology is revealed in proverbs chapter 4 verse 14 through 19 the way of the wicked is as darkness they know not at what they stumble matthew chapter 15 verse 13 and 14 let them alone, they be blind leaders of the blind, and the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. This appears to me to be a reference to the, the ministry of the image of the beast leading people into captivity, promoting uh, ecclesiastical, promoting and promulgating ecclesiastical fraud to civil powers and organized crime in the form of a religious tax to ecclesiastical powers and leading people into captivity with the seal of Satan, Revelation 13, 15 through 17. Would, and we know that what's going to happen if it gets power blocking free speech on this group, this 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 civil power, 
that they'll they'll summarily execute people in the streets without any pretense of righteous judgment or justice, and this will cause the mark of the beast to fall upon all flesh and all world, and Jesus Christ. This will hasten the second advent of Jesus Christ because actually, what is taking place is that God has set the seal of eternal life upon the saints, and this automatically set the wicked apart for exclusion and their evil works, and the image of the beast made itself manifest, judging all flesh. In hypocrisy and as itself and and lifted it itself up and luciferian uh uh luciferian rebellion against the the uh god's presence in the constitution of man and transformed just as lucifer transformed into satan this is exactly what occurs within all those that receive the mark of the beast they they exchange the truth of god for a lie they incorporate the worship of death into the constitutions of, of men in democratic societies. And they transform from children that knew the glory of God by the, by even in a passive manifestation by the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5, 22 and 23. They transform. They have this Luciferian fall and they transform into children of Satan with the mark of the beast. And that's the, that's the manifestation of the ministry of the image of the beast is to lead all people in darkness into captivity until they fall into the pit of destruction. Let them alone, they lead blind, leaders of the blind, and the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the pit. Matthew chapter 15, verse 14. Revelation chapter 9, verse 11. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. So this is the ministry. This is what it's it's there to do. It's leading people. I and mean, we know that once it, it, it blocks free speech and it has civil powers protecting it, and it's got ecclesiastical powers standing up on the nightly news every night as it's as it's, we know that it's going to sexually abuse God's children, because this is why God tears down all the cities in the world. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 23 through 31. All the cities of the world are broken down at the presence of the Lord and by his fierce anger. This appears to me, Jeremiah 4, 30 and 31, appears to me to be sexual abuse of God's children and check training to commit murders. Okay? So, judgment comes. When it, when it gets power, it doesn't need civil and ecclesiastical. If they write laws blocking free speech on it and the and the church starts standing up and telling everybody everything's okay while it's sexually abusing God's children we're done here this whole planet every pla every city in this world is going to be destroyed and God says I'm the one that's going to do it because you're not going to sexually abuse my kids and get away with it because that's exactly what it appears to me to be in Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 30 which is the same harlot that appears in Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6. And that's exactly why these nasty people are doing what they're doing today. And, and, and poisoning the food supply, pouring out the spirit of Antichrist, and tormenting people in their flesh today. Because it, 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 they are trying to incorporate the seal of Satan into the constitutions of democratic unions. And that appears, and that is the total blackout of free speech. On, on this group of people, and he had power to give life in the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and causes as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed, and the appearing of a religious tax. So, and the, the, the blackout of free speech is to get the civil powers to protect it, and then the, the, the organized crime in the form of a religious tax, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, receive a mark on the right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name. The religious tax is so ecclesiastical powers will get up on the nightly news every night and tell everybody about that that the that God's children are not being sexually abused and trained to commit murders to keep it quiet and that's the manifestation of the seal of satan being constant being incorporated into the constitutions of man and democratic unions and that's that's why the image of the beast today is promulgate, promoting and promulgating ecclesiastical fraud to civil powers, Revelation chapter 17, verse 3, and promoting organized crime in the form of religious tax to ecclesiastical powers, Revelation chapter 17, verse 3 and 4. So it appears that the administration of the image of the beast 
as it appears in Isaiah, again, appears in Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Okay? And I wrote here, this is God declaring their madness. This is God declaring the administration of the image to the beast as it's laboring to exchange light for darkness, the kingdom of God and the glory of God for the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of Babylon, whereas it supplants the glory and the gospel of Jesus Christ for itself in a, the bodies of ecclesiastical fraud. And that's exactly what it's doing. Philippians 4.19, And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And once it achieves civil immunity to commit murders, we know it doesn't need civil power. It doesn't need civil powers anymore because it can just kill anybody that tries to repeal any law. And it doesn't need ecclesiastical powers as manifested by Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, what then is it good for? It is thence for good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot under men. This is how, this is how the image of the beast is going to treat you if you, allow, if you stand up and you allow Satan's children in your congregation as they're soliciting what appears to me to be a religious tax today. So it appears that the administration of the image of the beast, as it appears in Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. God is declaring their madness. He's declaring the ministry and the madness of the image of the beast as the image to the beast in predestination with the seal of Satan, Revelation 13, 15 through 17, is the administrator, the mediator between all flesh and the spirit of Antichrist. 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. And the light shineth, excuse me, God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So when you're being administrated, you're being ministered to by the image to the beast, God's not in that. God's not anywhere in that. When he's taking, when he's trying to convince civil powers to block free speech on a million of them so they can execute people in the United States with that summary judgment, just execute people without any pretense of, of, of righteous judgment or justice and ecclesiastical fraud to, to ecclesiastical, excuse me, organized crime to ecclesiastical powers in the form of a religious tax. You're, the, the, the Bible makes it absolutely crystal. You're, you're talking to Satan. Revelation 17, 17, you're talking to the representative of Satan that's, that's harvesting the entire world and attempting to incorporate the worship of death in the constitutions of men reflected in, in de dem democratic societies and civil and ecclesiastical powers. God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Next, God declares the transformation of all lost souls with the mark of the beast. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 21, and they shall pass through it, hardly bestead and hungry, and it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry, they shall fret themselves and curse their king and their God and look upward. We know Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. So first and foremost, they're spiritually hungry because they're no longer capable to cultivate the fruits of righteousness or magnify the glory of God in any way, form, or fashion within their being. And as they transform, they pass through from, uh, from just as I've been preaching on previous lessons that we've all transformed out of Eden when we grew up as adolescent children, okay? We all have, have experienced the fall as Adam and Eve experienced it in the Garden of Eden. And what's being depicted here in Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20, 21, is the passing through of those that transfer back, that, that fall backwards and transform into children of Satan, those that were even passively receiving uh, the fruits of righteousness, Galatians 5, 22 and 23, and thus magnifying the glory of God in their lives. And once they transform, as the spirit of Antichrist poisons their blood and makes their blood toxic and the demons of hell are manifestly arrayed in their presence, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 10, then they, they curse their king and their God and they look upward because they're confused. They don't, they're in darkness and they don't know why, they don't understand why everything in the world is now falling apart 
And it's the it's it's falling apart because of the manifest ministry of the image of the beast soliciting the worship of death and attempting to incorporate the seal of Satan within the constitutions of men. Job chapter 11, verse 7 through 11, we have God declaring, Canst thou by searching find out God? Canst thou find out the Almighty unto perfection? It is high as heaven. What canst thou do? Deeper than hell. And canst, what canst thou know? The measure there is longer is longer than the earth and broader than the sea. If he cut off and shut up or gather together, then who can hinder him? For he knoweth vain men, he seeth wickedness also. Will he not then consider it? So this cutting off is the cutting off from the glory of God. And it's the same thing that's being depicted in Isaiah chapter 21 as they pass through and they transform from people that knew the glory of God into children of Satan with the mark of the beast. And as the image of the beast forces all flesh into the pit of destruction, Isaiah chapter 8, verse 22, And they shall look under the earth and behold trouble and darkness, dimness of anguish, and they shall be driven into darkness. This is them going, this is, this is all souls falling into the pit as manifestly declared to be the children the, and captive to the king which is the angel of the bottomless pit, who has, who has, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. So we know the golden cup represents, represents the kingdom of Babylon in the harlot's hand, and that all who reside in Babylon are in subject subjection unto the will of the, of the king. Daniel chapter 5, verse 1 through 31. Mal Micah chapter 4, verse 5. And two, Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 through 13. As the harlot, the administration of abominations appears as those in closest phys physical proximity to the appearing of Antichrist, no longer cognizant of the residence of death within their immediate environment and inhabiting the temple of God. This is the reason why satanic captivity is depicted as the kingdom of darkness. And Babylonian captivity, they're captivated unto the will of the king, and they are no longer cognizant of death's residence within their souls and the demons of hell arrayed within their environment. 2 Corinthians 6, 16, Isaiah chapter 28, verse 18 and 15, Romans chapter 6, verse 12 through 14, 20 and 21, Romans chapter 2, verse 5 and 6. Jeffrey Leon, if you're edified by this program, please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, receive notifications of future installments. And remember, you can come to the throne room of God today and receive your healing directly if you're abiding in mercy and grace as manifested by Matthew chapter 13, verse 10 through 15. Thank you.